At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Monday morning. Hey, today we're going to talk about police shootings. Another police shooting over the weekend across the country, this time in Milwaukee. Riots break out two consecutive nights. Uh, Property is destroyed. People are hurt. We'll talk about it with a man here in the studio today who led the charge here in Fresno of Black Lives Matter. 436 Me TV, option 11, back with our program after a word from our sponsor, Thomas Casagrande, 2020 Optometrics. And welcome back to the program here on a Monday morning. I'm glad you're here. Our sponsor today, Thomas Casagrande, 2020 Optometrics out there at Shaw and Blackstone. Hope you get a chance to get out there and see him. A couple of programming notes before we get started. You all know what happened over the weekend, of course, in Milwaukee with some of the violence. We'll get to that. But tomorrow we have, I think, at least two people in here, maybe three, talking about the Larks organization. Dates way back to the late 50s or early 60s, something like that. And we'll talk about what that organization is about. Later in the week, Long Jong is going to be here. He's a former city councilman. He's now an activist and, uh, you know, he stays, uh, keeps his hand in the political scene, I guess. We'll talk to him about local politics and what's going on here with some of the races, specifically the mayor's race, and what's going on out there in Northeast Fresno with that discolored water situation. You read that article in the B, uh, what was it, a few days ago, talking about, you know, private email servers. Uh, people at the city trying to hide some of those uh, citizen complaints out there in Northeast Fresno. So we'll talk about that with Blong and much more. But for now, we're going to uh, concentrate on Black Lives Matter and another police shooting that took place over the weekend. This time, a 23-year-old black man, his name is Silville Smith. He was shot and killed by police on Saturday afternoon in Milwaukee. Authorities say that they have body cam video. We haven't seen it yet. It hasn't been released. Police stopped two suspects in a car late Saturday afternoon uh, in the city of Milwaukee. They say that those two suspects ran out of the car. So then a foot pursuit uh, was uh, in full bloom, my friends, at that point. The officer shot and killed Smith. According to police, he was armed with a semi-automatic handgun. Later that night, riots broke out in the city. Protesters, there was a rampage, property was destroyed. They set uh, cars on fire, they destroyed a gas station, they threw rocks. We get the latest in this report now from CNN. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, things are calming down this hour after a night of violent protests sparked by a police shooting. Crowds there gather just hours after police say an officer shot and killed an armed man during a foot chase. During the protests, one officer was hit in the head by a brick thrown into a squad car. Police then moved in to clear the streets as you see here, but they say protesters set four buildings on fire and threw rocks at the officers. Milwaukee's mayor spoke earlier about the shooting. Listen. He was hit by two bullets, one in the chest, one in the arm. That individual, it's a 23-year-old man, has died. The officer was wearing a body camera. It is my understanding that the body camera was operating. Because it involved the Milwaukee police and because an individual was killed, the investigation is being led by the state of Wisconsin. So the state of Wisconsin will be the one that will have access to that film from the body camera and is the one that is now undergoing the investigation. 
As you all know from what happened from that point, things deteriorated. When I left the scene, which was probably a little after five o'clock, there was still calm at that scene. Later in the evening, as we all now know, things got out of hand. Mayor Tom Barrett there of the city of Milwaukee also saying three people have been arrested. We heard from a witness who says that she does not believe the unrest is over in Milwaukee. Just basically awestruck and amazement. I never thought I would see my own city in a state of unrest to potential riot, you know. Um, I just never thought I would see it. We're standing here speaking with you. Just heard gunshots maybe two to three blocks away. I feel maybe the bulk of the large incidents are over for the evening, but I definitely do not feel that this is over. The officer involved in the shooting has been placed on administrative duties while authorities investigate. All right, live in our studio right now is Justice Renee Anthony Medina, a protest organizer and he's an activist as well. He helped organize the Black Lives Matter uh, rally here in the city of Fresno on July the 9th, where more than 500 people showed up. He wants police uh, here in the city of Fresno to revamp their department, change policy, and he may even want, I don't know for sure, he might want Police Chief Jerry Dyer out at this point. Now remember, we're electing a new mayor. That's up to the mayor's office and the, really the mayor. Um, has a stronghold over who has uh, and holds that position of police chief, fire chief, and uh, many more positions in the city of Fresno. We'll talk to Justice about that and much more here on the program. As you can see, my friends, I am not wearing my iWatch today, and I don't know if I'll ever wear it again because I don't need it. Uh, I know exactly what time it is at all times. It is exactly um, 7 or 10.07. See that? I'm Johnny on the spot with that. 436, Me TV, option 11. Dr. Thomas Casagrande, our sponsor today. He's Johnny on the spot when it comes to those specs, those eyeglasses. See you back here in just about a minute or so. At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're working hard to be your place. And we're back here on the program, and of course, uh, what happened over Milwaukee made big news, uh, headlines all over the country, and 23-year-old uh, Seville Smith, he's a young African-American, shot by a black police officer, by the way, in the city of Milwaukee. They say he was armed with a semi-automatic uh, handgun. He turned around as he was running away from police officers and brandished that gun. I don't, I'm not sure if they pointed that gun uh, towards the officers or not. Body cam video, they say they got it. They haven't released it. We'll see exactly what happens. But last night, they had the second consecutive night of riots in the city of Milwaukee. We'll see what happens tonight. It seems like, uh, you know, this is happening all too often the uh, past couple of years. Justice Renee Anthony Medina is here. First time we've met. Good, good to see you. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Good. Okay, so reaction to what happened in Milwaukee. If what they say is true, um, would you consider this a justified shooting? Um, any shooting is not justified. I mean, there's ways to go about it. I mean, he got shot in the chest and the arm. He obviously could have been shot in the leg, could have been tased. Um, I've seen countless videos on Facebook of them apprehending someone with a weapon, um, not taking their life. At the end of the day, people would just want to stop dying. <laughs> they just stop. They don't want to be scared of these police officers. Um, you know, it, it's not necessary. It's not needed. Yeah, but I just want to I, I just want to clarify because if if someone is brandishing a gun and mm -hmm. he's running from the scene and he turns around and he's using a semi-automatic weapon, according to police, I'm just going about what police say. I yeah. don't have the facts other than that. Yeah, that 
he had more rounds of ammunition than the police did. Mm -hmm. So if he turns around and aims that gun at But did at he them, shoot? Well, they didn't give him a chance. They shot him. But exactly. If, but, but if he's brandishing that gun, do, do police officers have a right to shoot and defend themselves? I mean, he didn't shoot at them. No, but had he shot and shot a police officer, would that have been acceptable? That situation didn't occur. What we do know is he didn't shoot, and they can't even say the he pointed the gun at the officers. Right. Until he shoots, you know, he has no reason to be killed. But you know what police policy is around the country. Yeah, they you just have to brandish face, a gun. Yeah, you just honestly, if you look at Fresno Police Department's um, policies, it's very vague. But pretty much, the officer just has to feel threatened, and they have the right to kill you. That's not correct. What, so what should the policy be? Do you think that, uh, you know, because if someone is po if someone breaks into my house, for example, mm -hmm. and they're threatening me or my family, mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot and ask questions later. Mm -hmm. So if an officer sees a suspect brandishing a weapon and pointing that weapon towards them, mm -hmm. then he has every he or she has every right to defend themselves. I'm going to counteract that with a question: Is it serve and protect or shoot and kill? Um, if the officer is being threatened, I just want to know from your standpoint, mm -hmm. does he have a right to... But the officer's meant to serve and protect. Right, not shoot I and think kill. That's, I think that's what he's, what he's doing. No, he? who is... No, not, not in my opinion. Okay. These, it's... To me, there's ways to go about things, right? You have a gun. You don't shoot. You're not a threat yet. You have a gun. You, oh, you're aware of a threat that can possibly occur, Correct. There's opportunities for you to shoot below the waist, even if they break into your house. By law, you're, you, you're not supposed to shoot above the waist, right? Where is that law written? I mean, it, I you can check that. it. You just <laughs> you can <laughs> okay. check it. I haven't seen but this that. is just what I've heard. But um, okay. shoot below the waist. It's not that hard. You're trained. They're trained to shoot isn't into that the only chest. In the movies? No. That's in, you that's can. In, that's in westerns. You only, can isn't shoot. It? You can shoot below the waist. It's not that hard to shoot you in the leg. It's not hard to shoot you in an arm. But let's say you wound the victim. You shoot him in the leg. He still has the opportunity to swing that gun. So and just shoot kill you. him. Well, I would kill him if they came into my house. Yeah, I would kill him. That's horrible. I just don't believe no, in violence. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't believe in violence. If they're threatening your kids mm -hmm. and your family, you have every right to protect them, mm -hmm. and they shouldn't be in your house anyway. That's a different scenario, though. Officers are right. Every day, an officer puts a badge on. You have yeah. to recognize that you might lose your life. You right. signed up for the job. Yeah. It's a it's a different obligation. An officer compared to a civilian is a completely different obligation, and the right. training should be a lot different. Right. And you know, a lot of people you're going to get a lot of flack for this because. Oh, yeah. You of course, know, I have been. <laughs> you have been getting a lot of flack for this because the, the, the general consensus is, look, if you have a gun and you threaten a police officer with a gun, you're going to get shot. That's pretty much a general given across mm -hmm. the country with any police department. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's here in Fresno or wherever. Mm -hmm. You're telling me you don't agree with that. No, I mean, Philandro Castillo had a, uh, had a gun and he had a permit for it and they still shot and killed him. So, <laughs> yeah. And the Horrible. thing is, we don't know exactly what happened because that video was started late after the shooting took place. And I still don't understand why his girlfriend, or was that his wife, his girlfriend, if it were me, I, I, I would have been so panicked, I wouldn't have been able to consciously start a video, I mean, a you live have, stream on Facebook. You have to, I mean, or your story doesn't get told. Um, but isn't it the most important thing is to try to save his life first? No, you instant? can't even move in that situation because she would have been shot and killed too. Okay, you mean, let's take a quick call here. Hey, good morning, caller. You're on the air. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, good morning, John. Uh, Justice, let me ask you a question. Let's say uh, a Hispanic was had a, a, a gun and you had a gun and they're, and they're aiming at you. Would you protect yourself to, uh, to the other person? As far as shooting first, you know, because you know, you automatically you you shoot first. You're, you're not going to ask a uh, hall or whatever. Police officers are trained to to pull out their weapon, like, like say, and, and shoot. How are you going to shoot someone from the uh, from let's say the chest down, uh, and and hopefully get him down? If he's got a semi-automatic, he, if he gets shot in that area, he's going to shoot automatic. I mean, he he's going to have more. Round shot at at the officers and the officers going to shoot them, and I'm not blaming the officers. And all that. they get a bad rap anyway, as far as uh, the way uh, the media is, uh, you know, saying that all officers are, are are not trained right. But at the same time, you yourself, uh, you seen it all, and you, and you've been in protests, and you know, we we uh, as 
as people, remember, we have to abide by the rules. They also have to abide by the rules. So until you see who is right or wrong, we can't judge who, who's, uh, who's guilty or not. Now, uh, what do you think? What would you do what, if someone was facing you with a semi-automatic and you had a, a, a pistol also? Would you shoot first or, or let they were, them shoot you? If they were chasing That's all I want to ask. If they were chasing me? Oh, is he? Yeah, let's say, say, let, let, let say you got into an argument and, and, and the, the other person had a semi-automatic mm-hmm. and he's ready to shoot you and you, you pull out your weapon. Let, mm-hmm. Let's say you had a weapon. Yeah. And you pull out your weapon like an, an officer. Would yeah. you wait for them to shoot you? If, yeah, if, I, I, I doubt it. if I'm an officer and I have a badge, then I'm shooting to apprehend the suspect, not to kill him. Hands right. down. What if he kills you first, then it's game over? That's my job. Caller, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you think about yeah. his, uh, what, what do you think about Justice's, uh, you know, um, his theory about how things ought to be instead of how they are? No, reality is this. Police officers put their lives every day. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I mean, I, I, this is one incident in Milwaukee. In Fresno, uh, we have Jerry Dyer. He, he's criticized for everything, okay, no matter what. I'm not saying all the officers are, 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 are perfect, but, hey, they put their lives up every day. Now they're being shot for no reason because of all these uh, violences that, that are in big cities and whatnot. And I, you have every right to protest, you know, here in Fresno or wherever you want to. But let's, let's be honest, okay? Has, has Jerry Dyer done his best job to, to keep uh, everybody safe? No. But at the same time, I think he's the best chief that Fresno has ever had in Fresno, okay? So that's my opinion. And, and I'm, I'm from Sanger. So I know uh, the, by, by seeing the situations and, and talking okay. friends of mine. But that's really what I want to tell you. Okay. Hey, thank you, caller. I appreciate that call. Any response uh, before we go to break here? Uh, no. no? No. Nothing. Okay. All right. <laughs> Justice Rene Anthony Medina is our guest today. A lot more to get to, a lot more to talk about. 436 Me TV Option 11. Hey, we got another phone call here. Let's take it before we go to break here, just real quick. Uh, caller, quickly, you're on the air, kind of short on time. Go ahead. What's your comment or your question? Before we go to break here. Hello? Yep, you got to mute that TV, sir. Mute that TV. Hi, is this John? Yeah, mute your television, please. Hello? <laughs> All right, let's turn them off. Okay, if you are watching the caller who just called in and kept saying hello, 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 please turn down the sound on that television set or you're not going to be able to hear us, okay? Turn it down and then call back at 436 Me TV Option 11. Otherwise, we're going to get feedback, my friends. Thomas Casagrande, the sponsor today, back in a moment. At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. Take a look at this. Let's play. This is too hip for you. I'll slow it down. Let's play. Watch all your favorite classic game shows on Buzzer TV. KBBC Digital Channel 13.7. Just thought I'd uh, reiterate here, if you do want to call in, make sure and turn down the sound on your TV. You know they have a little mute button there on the remote. Hit that mute button and you will mute us, my friends. And then uh, you can call in and we'll be able to hear you. You'll be able to hear us. Um, Maybe that caller is calling back. Caller, are you there? You're on the air. Hello. Yes, uh, John, this is Dan. Yeah, good good to hear from you. What's your question, my friend? Okay, my question is that I guess uh, you kept on saying about the consensus, the consensus among the police uh, and the assumption, underlying assumption is that their lives are in danger, uh, but the facts are different. In 2015, police shot 
12, nearly 1,200 people and uh, many uh, people of color in that. And only 41 police were shot. Actually, more police officers died in accident than were shot. So it's the people are, whose life are in danger. And again, police does not have the right to be judge, jury, and executioner. Justin is right. I mean, brandishing gun and stuff, uh, act of shooting is the only time police would have the right to do that. Otherwise, they cannot be in a split second. They are making a decision, making that person guilty and executing him right on the spot. And our nation, I mean, we all have the same right, you, justice, and I. We have the same right to uh, protection under the law. And again, yeah, our John, second yeah, president, John saying, Adams, said I, I we are a nation of laws, not of men. And yeah, this okay, is okay. You know, I disagree with you because here, here's the thing. Nobody has a right to brandish a gun and threaten you and threaten me and go out and destroy property. And if they do threaten and they do get shot, they got what they deserved. How about that? Whoa, hey, hey. No one has a right to threaten you. So if your son was killed by a police officer, you'd be okay no with it? No one has a right Wait, hold on. to Answer threaten this question. you. You know what? If your if son, somebody, if if your, if your son if was somebody, murdered by a police officer, would you be okay with it? If someone, he deserved to die. If someone pointed a gun at you right now, you know what I would do? I would shoot that person to save your life before he shot you. His life is you. just as the thing is though. His life is just as valuable. I don't as want mine. you shot. I would save your I don't life want by him, shooting that I don't person. Want, I don't want him dead either. Well, you though. know what? No one has the right to break the law and point a gun at anybody, whether it's a police officer or anybody else. That's very true. No one has a right yeah. to go out and destroy other people's properties, to blow up a gas station, to steal a car. No one has the right to do that. We have laws in this country. We have police to try to protect us and to try to defend those laws. Are there bad police officers? Obviously. There are bad people in this world. There are bad newscasters. There are bad TV hosts. There are bad police officers. We all know that. But no one has a right to threaten you. I would defend you if somebody threatened you. So if a cop came in here and pointed a gun at me and it was not justified, would you shoot him as well? If if it was a rogue cop, yes. How do we know if it's a rogue cop, though? Who How knows? do we know? I'm scared of anyone with a badge, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. It's horrible. But, but, I mean, not everybody who is shot by a police officer, um, not, not every shooting that takes place by police is unjustified. I think that's crazy. It's just like every shooting is not justified. Mm -hmm. Every shooting is not unjustified, and every shooting is not justified. There, it, there has to be some middle ground. Would you agree with that? Um, like I said, unless your life is actually being threatened, you don't have the right to kill that person. Right. But we don't know what happened in Milwaukee. Yeah. I haven't seen the video. I wasn't there. I wasn't exactly. a witness to it. I didn't see it with my own eyes. You know, so it, I, it's, only... it's just sad to know it's going to continuously happen until something's done about it. And I think that's what my purpose is in this whole movement. Um, right. But you agree, nobody has a right to threaten anybody. Yeah, violence on both ends is wrong. It's I don't wrong. believe in it's violence wrong. at all. We have another call here. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Well, caller. I don't like to ask this guy, has he ever been in a situation where somebody did point a gun at him? Um, do you really stand there and wait till they shoot you? Don't you think that's a little too late to defend yourself? And if indeed all the police officers did that, we would have absolutely no one to protect us. Uh, okay. I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, in the last five um, years, there's no officer that's been killed in Fresno, California. I don't understand where the threat comes from. Um, I think like the one of the officers that had died was a heart attack, so I guess they should start shooting hamburgers and fast food restaurants instead because I clogging his arteries and stuff. But <laughs> there's a, there's no to me there's no real threat. I've been threatened by more police officers than random thugs, to be honest with you. Right. So. Right. Okay. I don't hang, understand it. Hang on, let's take a call here. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi. Um, I just have a question. Uh, well. I'm thinking, well, uh, where does uh, gun control uh, kick in? Then maybe, maybe there, if possible, there is a way to uh, uh, where they can uh, uh, find the people uh, that are selling the guns, maybe to find a way so that the wrong people don't get a hold of guns out there. Uh, better gun control so that the, 
guns aren't being sold out there illegal or you know that the wrong people aren't getting a hold of the weapons the guns i'm all for protection absolutely we have to protect ourselves one way or another yeah. um you know but uh you know some way to scan the people better that are buying the guns or the wrong people you know people that have been perhaps in in jail before because they have used a gun in a in a wrong way uh, make sure that they don't get a hold of a gun again, or I don't know. Something has to be done because yes, a lot of innocent people are dying, and yeah. and yes, I I, I agree of, uh, also that the officers have to do their job. Unfortunately, what what can they do? You know, if uh, somebody's waving a gun and and then right off the bat you can't you don't know if that person's under drugs or has a gun. And they don't know what they're doing because they're under drugs, you know. But they don't have time to, okay, let's let's see, that one's under drugs, you know, because <laughs> uh-huh. they're waving a gun. What are they going to do, uh-huh. you know? But, yes, All under right. better gun control, perhaps, maybe, to see uh-huh. if they don't get a hold of these of the, the guns. Right. You know? I, that, I mean, that's, that makes street. sense. I mean, there's a, there's a thousand and one gun control laws on the books already, and they want to get more gun control. But there is the Second Amendment right. Um, I don't care how many how many gun control um, bills that you put uh, into law, you can get your hands on. You can get your hands on a gun. You can't control who gets a gun. No. I can probably go down the street here and get a gun illegally yeah. in like five minutes. I think the real question is, where do these guns come from? I like, don't why, know. Why does somebody have a clip that has twenty three bullets in it? Like, how does that get into the country? There's I, I bigger, have no idea. There's bigger issues than just gun control. But listen, you didn't just come here to voice your opinion. You also voiced your opinion at the city council meeting Very recently. True. When did this take place, by the way? This is a little uh, outburst. Of yours. <laughs> Sheesh, I think it's in the paper. I don't remember what day it was, but it was at City last Hall. Last couple of weeks? Yeah, not this last uh, City Hall, the one it before. Was the one, it was the run prior. Okay, yeah. let's roll a videotape. Oh, Justice <laughs> Rene Anthony Medina um, voicing his opinion at the City Council meeting recently. Play it with the sound and you'll see what happens. Very entertaining, by the way. <laughs> Is there still a point? And they're still taking our tax dollars. So what training has been put in place to make sure that they're going to stop shooting first? Because we've seen Dylan Noble's video. He stood there for at least 30 to 45 seconds. If he had a gun and wanted to kill a police officer, he would have did it as soon as he got out of his car. He stood there. I watched the video. Mr. Medina, if time is up, we have to... So you're going to silence me? Yes, we have to respect the other people in the audience. They have equal opportunity to speak as well. So can you answer my question before I move then? Thank you. Have a seat. So you answered my question. Next is Kathy Omachi. Hold on. You wish to discuss... You seen this? Death Who holds away? them accountable? Because they don't stand here for us. You can kick me the fuck out because I don't care. Go ahead. Take me out. Because who's holding them accountable? You didn't want to drink the water because you know it's dirty. You don't have any questions. You can't answer any of my questions. You didn't even say you stand with us when we argue with you. Mr. Lachi, uh, you have the floor. Thank you for your patience and courtesy. And you have an opportunity to speak. Go to hell. Thank you for being patient, Kevin. So, Justice uh, Renee Anthony Medina, at a recent city council meeting within the last month or so, um, escorted out of the building. He was very upset, used a little profanity, and, uh, you know, obviously showed his emotions. You showed your emotions. Uh, Before we get your comment on that, um, let's take this call here. Go ahead, Carter. You're on the air. I don't have a comment for what just happened on TV, but this is kind of directed toward justice. The people that are asking the questions, you're not really answering the questions that people are asking you because I'm gonna be honest, not, a lot of the questions aren't framed too well, so it's my not, questions. Not, not your questions, either, oh, okay. the calling questions. Oh, okay, because uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, no, you, you're doing a good it. job, John. <laughs> okay, like all right. <laughs> okay, call, caller, Hello? go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, I try to be fair on this program. I don't. I don't yeah. like taking sides, but go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Okay, I don't want to take sides either, but I guess what it is is that you're not really. People are calling in and answer, asking the questions, but you're not really answering yeah. what they're asking well, you. You're kind of I just speaking need, around the book. I need a I need a straightforward 
question and then why don't you ask me straight, straight ask give me a straightforward question i'll yeah. give you the answer okay what okay what's your whole thing what what are what is your comment or your answer to um clearing up this gun violence because it's not guns that kill people it's, it's people, people that kill people exactly violence has to end on both sides regardless exactly cops and don't need to shoot people black people, people it's not, it's just not. White people. It's, it's all of us yeah everybody violence has to stop um in my perfect world guns don't exist in my yeah. that utopian theory it's not possible right now so violence has to end on both sides a ceasefire needs to um be obtained from the police department um these shootings that are occurring I mean, you're not just going to stop the problem by detaining every black person in Fresno, California. There's actual issues as to why these people have guns and why they commit violence. Why, why do they exactly. have guns? In my opinion, it's poverty. It's poor education. Okay. It's um, food deserts that are in Fresno. Um, it's the lack of jobs. It's the lack of businesses. Um, these are the issues you have to attack first, rather than just shooting a person with a well, gun because you're scared Let me tell you what Jerry Dyer, the police chief, said. Hang on there, caller. Uh, the police okay. chief said, and this is Jerry Dyer, he says... Um, you know, these, these things that you mentioned are deep-rooted. He said yeah. the police department, you know, whether it's here in Fresno or across the country, cannot yeah. fix poverty, cannot fix homelessness, cannot fix That's mental right. illness, yeah. cannot fix broken families and other social oh, ills. Like that is that. not the job Here's of the police Here's the thing, department. though. So they how, go... They go second, how do we fix it? That's okay. the question. That's a direct question. I'm going to first to pinpoint that. They go out of their way, though, to make arrests and detain and... Um, Put people in jail that live in these areas rather than solving these issues. They go out of their way. Whose job is it to solve these issues? That's what I want to know. It's the community's job. I mean, Was what it happened? The mayor? Is it it's the council? The mayor, it... council, office manager, Jerry Dyer. Just arresting these people and taking them off the streets and then making money off of them and profiting off of them is not going to solve the issues. It just allows the cycle to continue. What about some of these people that don't want jobs? What about some of these people that don't want a home? They want. I mean, how street. do you know they don't want the jobs unless the opportunity is given to them? But there are some. I, I the know, opportunity had, is not always there here in but Fresno. But I've had people on this show that deal with the homeless, and I've been told, and mm -hmm. I don't know for sure mm -hmm. because I don't deal with it directly, yeah. but a lot of people you are want that lifestyle correct. on the street. Mm -hmm. They want That's that life. Right. I mean, these people still deal with mental illness. Caller, go ahead. What's that? There's a lot of these homeless people out here because I've talked to quite a few of them. And there's a lot of homeless people out there that don't want a home. They don't. They like living on the street. They like you know, robbing from stores. they That's the way they live their life, and that's all they know. And that's unfortunate in this world. It's Extremely very unfortunate. Right. Extremely unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> well, here's, an, here's another thing. An African-American, mm -hmm. his name is Oliver Baines. He's on the city council. He yeah. said, I'm not willing to blame our police department for things that happen all over the country. Of course not. He's exactly. Fresno does years. not have the same killing of black people by officers that exist around the country. That's according to um, uh, Reverend B.T. Lewis. Here in Fresno. Yeah, I think actually the, the past, I can't give you the exact number, but there's been over 20 shootings that have been fatal, that have been swept under the rug. No officer's been here convicted. Here in Fresno? Yeah, here in Fresno. Proof of that? Yeah, you can pull it up. I don't have it on me. Like, I can't give you the information. Well, next time you come in, bring it with you. I got you. you. I'd yeah, like to see it. But um, it's on their website. You can look on their website. Not when officer was charged, convicted, or if an investigation was opened. That's Actually, an issue. That, that wasn't Oliver Baines who said that. It was B.T. Lewis. He's yeah. a, uh, a Baptist uh, missionary. Uh, he's a missionary Baptist um, uh, reverend uh, mm -hmm. at the Baptist church. And so he's the one that said, you know, he's not willing to blame the police department for all the things that go on around the country. And by the way, uh, according to Police Chief Jerry Dyer, over the past three years, he said police shot three black men, all armed, only one killed. Mm -hmm. Somebody still died. But yeah, at least two other people didn't die, which is good. But um, but but I I guess I, the reason I bring that up, would you agree that that proves that we don't have? No, it doesn't. A, a There's, problem in terms of targeting black individuals here in the city of Fresno. Is, um, in Fresno, I mean the black population here is only eight percent. Right. The main issue that I've seen in the research I've done, a lot of the Latino community has right. been targeted and they've been killed. Um, I'm black and Mexican. Um. 
I necessarily don't agree with race, but that's a whole different subject and conversation. Okay. But um, you no, know, I've been labeled a Black Lives Matter activist and all this stuff. I'm standing here for the human race. I don't. I, I myself don't believe in race. Um, but yeah, the Latino community has been targeted here. Um, right. Impoverished areas. A lot of them have been murdered and slain. All right, got to go to break. 436 Me TV Option 11. Uh, Justice Renee Anthony Medina is here. We'll talk about the Dylan Noble shooting and other shootings around the country and the Black Lives Matter protest and the rally that took place on July the 9th. Call in and weigh in. Uh, Thomas Casagrande is our sponsor today, 2020 Optometrics. Frigidaire. It means the first refrigerator. It means a history of innovations that help make your home life better. And now we introduce the new Frigidaire French Door Refrigerator with over 100 ways to organize for maximum flexibility. Built with adjustable flip-up and slide-under shelving and stackable crisper drawers, it's the refrigerator that flexes to fit it all, no matter what your day will bring. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. And away we go. Here's the place that makes you smile. Stick around and stay a while. We're the home of great TV. That's memorable. That's, That's me. Follow me, sir. Call them classics. Call them the best. Call them favorites. Be a guest. Every day there's more to come. Watch and see. There's only one. Me TV. All you have to do is watch me. Are you kidding me? Follow me. That's memorable. That's me. That's me. Me, me, me. Oh. Me TV. Back here on the program, 436, me, TV, option 11. A caller is waiting. You're on the air. Caller, go ahead. Yeah, yes, sir. I got a, a comment for, for your guest. I agree with what you're saying, a lot of things, but my, my concern is when uh, people call in or ask questions or you're asking them to interrupt a lot, he should learn to control himself. This way he can hear all the comments you're making. Then he could express his feelings, but he should have a lot of data regarding what's going on. He should research everything else or have people helping him. This way he can prove what he's trying to say, not just say it. You've got to have proof in writing, and I think he'll be a very effective individual, but he's there, he needs to learn to come down and listen to what's happening, then respond. By doing what he did at the city council, they're just going to say, this man is not what's going on. They're not going to listen to him. And the older citizens are going to see the same thing. He needs to come down and have facts before he speaks. Oh, like in your TV show right now, he should have all his facts in writing and say what's happening. And if he can't get all of them, you get a, a group of people and uh, get all the facts before he starts speaking because people not going to listen to him or they're going to ignore him. But I like what he's doing, and it's true what is happening, but you got to fight politics, what's politics, and you have to have the facts right or you're never going to win this war because there is a lot of bad cops. There is a lot of bad people. There's bad people all over in different kind of businesses. So just take your advice from an older person, and I think you'll be affected better. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just respond to that real quick. Sure. I have the facts. I didn't bring the facts with me. I had a studio session until about 3 o'clock in the morning. Woke up late for this interview. Oh, um, okay. I do have a team that does the research. I've um, talked to council members um, behind the scenes. Everything you see on camera isn't how I am uh, all the time. Um, in the moments at City Hall, I was pissed off because they... Oh, this oh, is I a can't. live program. Ooh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. They did not answer my questions, and I hit them with facts, and they still stared at me um, with confusion. Um, I asked them about the policies that are put in place about Fresno, yeah. California. Had no answers. I asked them if Jerry Dyer followed the Obama's 21st century um, policing policies. Had no answers. I asked them what the training was for um, all of the repeat shooters. They had no answers. So I have hit them with facts, and I do have the facts. I just do not have them on me right now. And if you want to validate everything that I'm saying, Google is on your telephone, is on your computer. Okay. So, let's roll a videotape of that body cam video. Dylan Noble, body cam. We won't uh, play the sound on this. I don't want to hear the sound. We'll just talk over it. 
as we see this. Now, Dylan Noble, of course, shot uh, dead by police uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, something like that, as they tried to pull him over. Uh, they found traces of cocaine uh, in his system, and he was over the legal limit as far as alcohol is concerned. There's no question about that. And so I, I do want to quote Oliver Baines. He's an African-American, a former police officer, now serves on the city council. He, he recently told the Fresno Bee, as a black man and a former cop, Bain said he understands the emotions on both sides. At the same time, he said the targeted shootings of police officers have diminished the discussion about policing and race. Would you agree with that? Targeting police officers and shooting them? Like they did in Dallas. Dallas? I mean, that's a rare occasion. And Baton Rouge. Rare occasions. I mean, that's what happens when you continue to oppress these people. They're going to get violent. And that's why I'm trying to keep everything peaceful and give people routes to express their um, their emotions. Because you keep them bottled up, then they're eventually going to get violent. So you don't agree with Oliver Bain's statement? No. Okay. Here's what uh, the Reverend B.T. Lewis, the Rising Star Missionary Baptist Church, said. Uh, he said that uh, um, some people, some protests uh, go back, or some protesters... Uh, uh, to try to get back at police for personal reasons. That's what they try to do. Not necessarily to help the community better its relationship with law enforcement. Those people may not be ready for an honest and open conversation. That's journalization. I mean, don't talk about these activists until you've talked to all of them and understand why they're doing this. Well, Lewis also said it's concerning that no one protested the June death of toddler uh, Rashad Halford Jr., mm -hmm. uh, Lewis's cousin, who was killed in South uh, East Fresno by a gunman in front of his parents' yeah. home. Remember that little? Yeah, baby? I didn't hear. Yeah, I didn't hear. I didn't hear any protests until um, Hill Fresno, and of course, I'll stand up for that too. That's yeah. it, it's it's sad. Violence on all ends is sad. Did you protest when Dylan Noble was shot? Yeah, you did. Yeah, and um, that was kind of the main reason. That was the main reason this whole Black Lives Matter protest started? I, it I wasn't necessarily a Black Lives Matter protest. What was it? It was, I used it, well, because I didn't just go with promotion. I know how hashtag and social media works, so um, I used that for a term. Because um, there is a there is an activist community out here. But, um, yeah, it was part of the main reasons. I mean, I just pumped gas, like, where he was shot at. And I'm looking at the Same visual. station? Same station. Like, I live in that neighborhood. Like... Okay. It's extremely scary, you know, and extremely sad. Uh -huh. That's another life that's been lost. Now, here you see the officers, of course, pulling their guns. I don't think we want to see any more of this because I don't want to see him um, yeah, it's go down again. It's a yeah. very disturbing video. But we do have video of the Black Lives Matter uh, protest, and I'm still going to call it that because it took place on July the 9th. Yeah. Sean Blackson is where it started. Let's roll the videotape, and we'll talk about that. 500 uh, people showed up, yeah, it was and eight-mile trek. Yeah, very beautiful. Okay. Um, what was beautiful about it? Um, to actually see my community come out um, with each other. Uh, okay. Growing up here in Fresno, I never really felt that sense of community, and it's amazing to know that it's um, it's coming together now. Um, it's sad that lives have to be lost though to bring us together, but um, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It gives me a reason to wake up in the morning. It gives me a reason to live. Um, you know, I love my city, and I want to see this place as perfect as it can be. But you stop traffic here. I know that because I was yeah. there. I was right in the middle of it. And uh -huh. in fact, I'm, I'm the one shooting the video here. Oh, wow. Uh, right in the middle of Sean Blackstone. Uh -huh. uh, that was that was a very unusual, uh, very... Um, it was a high traffic area. Yeah. It was it was not difficult to shoot this video, but that's the mm -hmm. first time I stood in the middle of the intersection at Sean yeah. Blackstone. How do you feel? More than like two seconds. Yeah. But, uh, uh, without being hit by a car. Mm -hmm. So do you feel you had a right to stop traffic like this? Um, I have a right to protest. But the, but the question is, do you have a right to stop traffic? I, I have a right to straight. protest, and I can't control over, you know, there's probably 200 people right there. Um, and I asked them before they took the streets if they wanted to do it, and it was the choice of the people. Okay, hang on, caller. Now, wait a second. I'm going to take issue with it because I like you. Yeah. You said, you know, direct questions. The direct question is, do you have a right to block traffic? I mean, I have a right to do anything as I want as a human being. I mean, um, <laughs> so that's I'm going to yes. be real. Like, I, I don't know. I, I do what I want. So, yeah. You complained wanna, about not having direct questions. Yeah, if I, if I want to shut down traffic to protest and access my First Amendment rights, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to make sure you listen. I shut down Sean Blackstone because that's a high traffic area. Right. Um, Right. It had there had a purpose behind it. It's not just I just want to stop you from going to work. No, these people are going to see it. Right. Of course, the news media and outlets are going to be out there. I was out there. Exactly. So you, you drew me out. There. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, every there's a purpose to everything. I mean, I just don't yell, scream, and shout for no reason. Like there's a reason right. I do things. Caller, let's not yell and shout and scream. What's the question, <laughs> my friend?
Uh, the question is I have for the uh, guy this morning is, okay, I can understand about what, how the people feel, but what are we going to do without the police? I'm not calling for um, the end to police departments. I'm asking for community policing rather than preventive policing, which they're going to bring into Fresno. Um, instead of um, segregation from police officers and the community, I want to see everybody integrated. Um, these officers are here to serve and protect. I think a relationship has to exist between the police department and Fresno, California, which I don't see happening as of right now. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, one more small, one more short question. I am 60 years old. Yes, I've sir. I've never had a gun. I've never needed a gun. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have people that's in the community that's 15, 16, and 13 with guns, mm -hmm. you've got a problem. Yeah. Okay. Is, is there a question? Yeah. <laughs> Explain how you get those guns from out of those kids. Out of those kids, you give those kids activities. And thank you. Oh, my bad. I can hear the feedback. Thank it sounds you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you give these kids opportunities, um, you know, to actually be kids and to thrive in this community. I mean, you resort to crime as a means to get your end. Um, so we have to, you know, access why. You know, they resort to crime and violence and how we can change that. I mean, there's deeper issues than just police and guns. Well, there's a reason why you pull a trigger. Poverty, tribute. homelessness, yeah. all the, the, the social ills of our community and yeah. around the country. A lot of broken homes, too. I, yeah, a lot of broken homes, but that doesn't give anybody a right to hurt you or me. Yeah, and serve but and it protect, makes it makes know. sense, though. Um, yeah, I know. You have to understand why these people act this way. I mean, I, we I, can't just label them bad. They're not naturally bad people. Nobody's born a bad person. There's situations that create and mold to who they what are. What do you think of Martin Luther King Jr.? He um, comes from my era. I remember yeah. him when he was alive. I remember when he was shot. Yeah. His number one goal was to protest but be nonviolent. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? I agree. So how does that coincide with what happened in Milwaukee the last two nights? Like I said before, when you oppress people and you silence people and you continuously slay but people. Martin Luther King. They're going to get upset. And the thing is, there you don't is. You think Martin Luther King was oppressed? There you don't is. Think his people no, were oppressed but wait, at that time, hold on, but he, wait. He preached Let me answer, If I can answer the question. Go ahead. There is no Martin Luther King of 2016. Well, in my mind, he still exists. And I, I, I love what he stood for. But go I, ahead. Yeah, of course. It's very, you know. He's a great person, great leader, great values, great theories and philosophies. The fact of the matter is he was slain and his nonviolence ways proved to not be as effective as a change everything. So people are now picking back up where the civil rights movement left off. All right. Now, I'm going to catch you here Go ahead. Uh, in being a little bit hypocritical. I'm going to be very honest with yeah. you. Okay. On the one hand, you say it's okay to go out and riot. No, I'm not saying it's okay to go out and riot. Oh, okay. There's a reason good. why they're rioting. Okay, but That's you don't agree saying. with it. You don't agree. I don't agree. It. No, of course not. Okay, Especially right. if you're just going to destroy your own community that okay. you're living you in. That doesn't make sense to me. Destroying a gas station, blowing yeah. up a market. or To me, okay. that doesn't make sense to me. But yeah. there's a reason why they're doing this. And this okay. could have been stopped. It could okay. have been prevented, but, but it wasn't. A, but do you also agree that there's a reason sometimes that police officers shoot people? Of course there's a reason why they shoot them, but they don't have to shoot them. You can't, <laughs> okay. you can't expect right. a civilian right. to act a certain way and not expect a police officer to act a certain way. All right. That doesn't make sense. All right. That's let's, a let, let's go with the Alton Sterling video, can yeah. we? There, just real quick. No sound, no sound. I don't want to hear the sound. I just want to play it for a few seconds because uh, it is very graphic. In your mind, was this... I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Was the yeah. shooting justified? Um, no. Because? I mean, they already had him on the floor. Alton Sterling was the one from the, uh, the convenience Georgia. store, right? Georgia. Um, yeah. He no. was on the ground. Yeah, on the ground already. And they shot him while he was on, like, they were already apprehending him. For what reason? It's sad, dude. It's an execution. Extremely sad. Like, watch the video and try not to get teary-eyed. Watch the video of his son crying pleading for his father to come back. Right. Traumatizing. Right. I understand. I understand. What about Philando Castilla or Castile? Castile. Um, you know, this took place in Minnesota. We didn't see the entire video. Yeah. Uh, that video was 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 started uh, by a cell. It was cell phone video yeah. after he was shot. So we yeah. don't know exactly what happened mm -hmm. there. And how would you characterize that shooting? I just, I don't understand why everyone has, they have to shoot. I don't get it. Why do you have to shoot? There's, you know, they have no guns in the UK. 
I've seen plenty of videos where these cops calm down situations, scenarios. There's ways to go about it. I mean, yeah. you don't have to. You could have obviously broke his window and tased him if you really thought he was. You could have hit him with a beanbag gun. You could have put a canine on him, something. Yeah. Sheesh, right. at least he would have, you know, walked away and possibly went home at the end of the All day. Right. And they take right. that option away. All right. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Justice. I first wanted to say that I'm very proud of what you're doing and what you're standing for. My question is, call, first I want to say callers are calling in stating that what would you do if you were approached with a gun from another person? Um, I don't feel that that's what you are working towards. The greater issue here is policing and what police should do when they are approached by a civilian holding a gun. What are your thoughts about when a police is approached by someone in the community holding a gun? The second question is, what do you feel about police integrating in the community and bringing the community together? Um, the first, can you ask the first question again? I'm sorry. What should a police officer do if he's approached by someone with a gun? Yeah, you call backup, um, you assess the situation. If the person shoots at you, you shoot below the waist. Um, if they continuously shoot after, then... Do you really think police officers are that good a shot that they can shoot below If the you waist? can repeatedly shoot somebody in the chest and you have the time and you're getting paid to train and you're getting time and paid to um, go into the well, shooting we, range, is, yes, is of this, course. Is they, this is not lethal weapon. No, but... The movie, lethal these, weapon, or lethal weapon two, three, or four. The average this salary of a... a life, man. This average salary of a police officer in Fresno, California is $100,000. You have time to be trained correctly. These officers only get six months of training before they're put into the field after they get sh after they commit a shooting they're thrown right back into the field there's nothing to assess their ptsd okay, there's so nothing to assess and make sure that they won't shoot again or why they shot and how they can make sure they weren't they are not going to shoot again okay so as i understand it that's the change you want in the training Fresno police yes. department yes policy you want that to change yes so that they get better training longer training yes you want them to make less money of course they put their lives on the line. Why should they? That's a hundred thousand dollars. Jerry Dyer gets a hundred thousand dollars in two pensions. No, he gets two hundred thousand plus oh, a couple of pensions. Oh, yeah. Well, I think yeah. The, that's his salary based on. All right. So the you website. want that change? Of and, course. And, and what other policy do you want changed? Shoot below the waist. Shoot below the waist. Um, community policing. There's hang, a Viper. Hang on. Hang on, caller. Um, there's the Viper program that's going to be instilled in Modesto, Madera. That's going to come to Fresno afterwards, um, which is preventive policing. Um, that classifies people um, so, and so gives them. But before we run out of time here, yeah. is anybody? So, do you think that'll happen? Have you talked to Jerry Dyer about this? Oh no, I won't speak to Jerry Dyer. Um, you won't speak to him? No, I don't. Well, he, then how do you expect things to change? Um, I'm gonna get him ousted. I need to speak. You to You want Jerry Dyer out? Gone. Bye bye. <laughs> And how no. are you going to accomplish that? Um, actually, you, you have to go through the office manager, and so I want the office manager gone. I don't like Bruce Rudd either. Um, I want to see what Henry Perea and uh, what is it Lee Brand have to say. And so I want to. Have you spoken to both of them? Um, no, I've been extremely busy these past like week, but I plan on, plan on it. Um, I've been talking to a lot of um, nonprofit organizations, a lot of people in the community. Um, getting what everybody's ideas are before I even take the main stage. Just what you told me about changing police policy. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you right now, just from what I know of Lee Brand, because he's been on this show many times, so yeah. is Henry Prea. They're not going to agree with that. And then we get them out, too. I've well, talked to people out of here? I talked to council members. Um, Who it's on not, the council agrees with your changing of police policy? Uh, I'm not going to come out and say 100%. No, tell me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say it because I haven't Clint put in Olivier. the... Yes or no? I don't like him either. I'm going to get him out soon. All right. Oliver Baines, does he agree with it? I think I can um, talk to him and get him on the same page. You're kidding. What about um, what about uh, Esmeralda? She's raw. She's what? Raw. She's tight. I like her. Okay. She'll be on board. It's not what I'm asking. Is she going to be on board? Yeah. Uh, what about Sal Quintero? Well, he's not going to, he's almost gone, but would Sal agree with you on this? Um, I don't know. I have to sit down. We have to find compromise. Um, what about Capriolio? Writing. He's on the council. How about Steve yeah. Brandau? Um, I'm, I've, I've talked to those ones individually. I've talked to Baines and Esmeralda. That's um, it? Yeah. What about the others? Are you, are they I need to reach out. Yeah, I need to reach out. 
um, on both ends, especially. But um, anyways, so compromise. Want out. I want dire out. You want rut out. Yeah. What do you say about Keith Foster, the, the, the who an African American yeah. at the top of the chain mm -hmm. got busted for drugs? I've heard a lot face. of I've heard of a lot of stories about Keith Foster. All right, give me give me give me one because we're almost out of time here. I, I need I, hurry before we got like <laughs> y'all trying to get me killed by no, talking about know. these type of things. I want to know. Um, here's a guy that here's was a the role thing. Here's the thing. The African American though. community. Keith Foster and Jerry Dyer are best friends. We were best friends. What, so that right hand, tell me that's anything. Jerry Dyer's right hand man. So you're gonna tell me that Key Foster was doing all of these things, and Jerry Dyer did not know. Hang on, Carter. That's an issue. Just think about that. That's ponder your that. issue. Yeah, ponder you, you, that. Your, your claim is that Dyer knew about it. Yes, and I've also I've I've just was heard he involved a lot of in things. your opinion? I possibly I I don't have the facts. I just have my thoughts and assumptions. All right, you um, grew up uh, where? Clovis. In Clovis. And uh, southeast Fresno. African American. And Mexican. And Mexican. Yeah. Uh, were you harassed at Clovis Unified School District? Yes, sir. Has the did you complain? By the way. Yes. Nothing happened. No. Were you called any racial slurs? Of course. Okay. All the time. Did that shape who you are today? It gave me thicker skin. It doesn't but did affect it shape me. your thought process. Oh, of yes. Who you are your personality. Yes, of course. It did. Yeah. Um, name it. I've probably been called it. Um, strictly because yeah. I was in Clovis Unified and I went to um, Rayburn Clovis East. I have no hatred in my heart, though. Yeah. I mean, you're just calling me these names and you're treating me this way because you're miseducated. Um, yeah, you don't know who imagine. I am. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a horrible thing, but it made me who I am. So I'm appreciative. Yeah. Uh, caller, quickly, because we got less than two minutes. It's going to have to be a, like a 10-second comment or a question. Please, hurry. Real quick. Uh, Justin, let's put this uh, the shoe in another foot. Suppose you were on a police officer. You came uh, across a, a, an individual that uh, was pointing a, a semi-automatic. Uh, you've been talking about police officers. Would you shoot that person if he's going to uh, shoot you? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to ask the question. Okay, so thank I you. Okay. Let me answer okay? the question. Let me answer gonna, the question. I'm going to answer the question. This is what I'm doing in that situation. I'm calling for backup. Um, before I shoot that person with my weapon, I'm going to try to calm down the situation. Um, if they point the gun at me and I have my pistol already out, I'm shooting below the waist. If I have the opportunity to grab my beanbag gun, I'm shooting them in the chest with a beanbag gun. If I have the opportunity to tase them, I'm going to tase them first. My um, first intent, as a, if I was a police officer, is not to kill this uh, civilian. It is to apprehend the, apprehend the suspect and then take them in. Okay, quickly, we got 30 seconds. Um, I want to come back. I don't know. No, I, I want you to come back. Yeah. I like you a lot. Yeah, you I, I would protect you. If, some, if someone was pointing a gun at you, I'd shoot him right now. Oh, man. You don't I'd have to shoot him. You don't have to kill nobody for me, bro. <laughs> it's okay. I would. Just to protect. Serve and protect, my Serve friend. Serve and protect. All right. You should have a badge. Um, I was going to ask another question. We're out of time, but you got to come back. I'll All book right. you, uh, come back maybe in October sometime. Yeah, for sure. Is that okay? Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Justice. Uh, Rene Anthony Medina, he is an activist right here in the city of Fresno, and who knows, you might see him at a city council meeting sometime oh. soon, my friends. Thomas Casagrande was our sponsor today. Thank you for that. Back with our program tomorrow, the Larks organization. So call in, and later in the week, Blong Jong. See you tomorrow. Have a good day. Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. If you have a need to promote your business or event, please consider MeTV Fresno for your next campaign. MeTV reaches over 100,000 of your potential customers in the Fresno area every single week.